Hello. Does it respond? Nice. What is your name? Is your name Bill? Is your name Bill? Hi. Hey, he's clapping, clapping, but it's still slower to respond. Slow to respond. Fine, I mean. <laughs> Doing all the technical data out here for the robot. Okay, it depends which question I can ask. Mm. So I think it's limited right now. Hello. Hello. Okay, the first press right here. Mm -hmm. Oh. Second press. Oh my goodness. Really you're getting hot? In which sense? <laughs> He's resting now. Sitting down. Sweet. I also won the chocolate prize to f finishing the puzzle first. This is what I did. I finished first, so I won the prize. So this is the end. This is the end of day one out of two. In each of, if a project gets completed, there is an evaluation that is being written for that specific one. Transport sector, finance sector, across all kinds. Okay, with a short tour around EDB. Nice! <laughs> what happened? And so, between, for, I spent a number of years in IBM research work and food safety, and we used to talk about the idea of from farm to table. We no longer think that way. We think about when we talk about from sea to farm to table. And if you think about that whole ecosystem, it's going to be different for different crops in different countries. Um, one thing that's very important to us is, is that if we build out this ecosystem, we need to have full participation of the whole supply chain. So whether that be that, that small two-acre farmer or the 5,000-acre farmer, we need to have full participation of each segment. And, and so for different segments, there's different business value and different price points. So for instance, we're working on an app that allows farmers to upload via their smartphone or legacy phone um, data onto the blockchain. And that is free of charge because there's more value and potential value in the ability to get the data. So that costs, especially the what I was um, One is effectively a sense that it is. The ecosystem is set to so right now, which is why you're seeing that sense of uh, and this is my personal theory. My personal theory of hypothesis is this is exactly what happened with mobile phones. When the phones actually came in, everyone thought that the competitive advantage was in creating a mobile phone. But the truth is, 
food was not in between. It was in the software that we had. Then the phone ecosystem became super cheap. It became commoditized. My read on the industry is that's what's going to happen to the sensor ecosystem. Because you quickly realize that making the sensor itself is not a high quality And so everyone will start making sensors for really cheap prices. So I think the ecosystem will take care of itself as well. The second thing is the connectivity piece. Connectivity is interesting because what we have is proprietary technology and obviously we do a lot of initiatives like AI for Good is one of the things that we actively promote. Uh, in fact, uh, President Bradford. The kinds of things that the volunteers have now, the specific value, potential value of the Do you think, Gary, that is it a good idea to the blockchain enable founder companies who have an edge in market access? in this theory that you mentioned about the Latin America, there is the premium portion of this, you know, that we traditionally do help them to achieve you know, GAP certification or value certification for the purpose of the premium of the sports specific that we produce. But what about blockchain? What do you feel? Had some issues in China. Um, and basically, they had some stores that were closed by the regulators because they were selling organic product um, that wasn't organic. They thought it was, but there was some economic adulteration that had happened. And, and so the pork pilot was basically to what we refer to as the move from science to applied science, to see if the science of blockchain could be applied in this space. And, and so that pilot is highly successful, and that's how we evolved the solution to where it I don't operate because they're you know, if then else then this is what you do, right? But then you also have RDA, this is desktop automation. So you look at how more can you use humans interacting with the system, where the system needs some key decision elements of humans. So this is something like what earlier you had a VPM engine, a workflow engine, that with some on steroids, right? That is what uh, RDA is. And then you have interactive automation. Interactive automation is what today you see the consumer point of view, Alexa, Siri, Amazon. So think of this in an enterprise uh, concept. So you could uh, have your uh, uh, vendors or you could have your partners who want to know when their invoice is coming in or when their PO is coming in, talking to a system and getting the answer. In the same way, you could think about uh, your new HR, uh, uh, sorry, new employees who are joining. And questions and comments, please keep them in your mind because we want to explore them more in the fishbowl. So, so if I'm, I have to ask it to my colleague, so three or four? Three, okay. So the next speaker um, is actually a speaker we had in the previous round as well. He's the head for artificial intelligence automation at Vipro here in the Asia Pacific region. And um, you heard him speaking and he also made some very Interesting uh, comments. What are the top five things you need to do? Check email, read emails, and understand what you need to read the boss. How many hate updating timesheets? <laughs> How many hate uh, paying bills? How many hate doing <laughs> mundane activities like all of this which you? As soon as you think of something, you get a frown on your face. Uh, 